Hi, my name is Sohail and today I am going to talk about cyclic photophosphorylation. In this lecture, I will focus on photosystem 1, cyclic electron flow and ATP synthesis. The increase in NADPH and deficit of ATP may stimulate a temporary shift from a non-cyclic to cyclic electron flow until ATP supply catches up the demand. Cyclic photophosphorylation involves only photosystem 1 in cyclic electron transport. The photophosphorylation process which results in the movement of electrons in a cyclic manner for synthesizing ATP molecules is called cyclic photophosphorylation. And this process takes place in thylakoid membrane uses only photosystem 1 and P700 chlorophyll A molecule. The pathway is cyclic because the energized electrons that originate from photosystem 1 from P700 chlorophyll A molecule at the reaction center eventually it return back to P700 chlorophyll A molecule. In the presence of light electrons they flow continuously through electron transport chain within the thylakoid membrane. The photo excited electrons are transferred from photosystem 1 to mobile electron carrier that is called ferredoxin. Rather than being used for NADP reduction by NADP reductase enzyme, this electron moves from ferredoxin to cytochrome complex passes from ferredoxin to cytochrome complex. From cytochrome complex it moves to a mobile protein carrier that is called plastocyanin and then eventually return back to P700 chlorophyll A molecule in the reaction center of photosystem 1 where they are excited by light energy. The net result of this cyclic electron flow is that light energy is converted into chemical energy of ATP without the production of NADPH and oxygen. As they pass from one electron acceptor to another, the electrons loses energy and some of that energy is used to pump protons from chloroplast stroma to thylakoid lumen or thylakoid inner space. The enzyme which is called ATP synthase enzyme that is embedded in thylakoid membrane uses the energy of proton gradient to manufacture adenosine triphosphate. NADPH is not produced, water is not split and oxygen is not generated during cyclic photophosphorylation. Cyclic electron transport could not serve as the basis of photosynthesis because NADPH is not produced and NADPH is required to reduce carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. The significance of cyclic electron transport to photosynthesis in plants is unclear. Cyclic electron transport may occur in plant cells when there is too little NADP to accept electrons from ferredoxin. There is evidence that cyclic electron flow may help to maintain optimal ratio between adenosine triphosphate and NADPH required for carbon fixation as well as provide extra ATP to power other ATP requiring processes in chloroplast. I believe biologists generally agree that ancient bacteria used this process to produce ATP from light energy. So the light excited electron leaving the photosystem 1 that is used to make ATP instead of NADPH. Cyclic electron flow was observed in higher plant chloroplasts over 50 years ago and researchers they still debate that it is a real physiological process. To sum up, in cyclic photophosphorylation only photosystem 1 is involved. It is the cyclic flow of electron. Electrons they originate from P700 chlorophyll A molecule at the reaction center 
eventually return back to P700 chlorophyll A molecule. It takes place in thylakoid membrane as electrons pass from one electron carrier to another they lose energy and that energy is used to pump protons from chloroplast stroma to thylakoid lumen. The enzyme ATP synthase in thylakoid membrane uses the energy of protons to synthesize ATP. So, in cyclic electron transport chain, NADPH is not produced, water is not split and oxygen is not generated. Let us watch this slideshow.